so much for staying here on my channel i really appreciate your support and for always coming back now penda and i appreciate and uh, today we are storytelling and i just want to share my experience with you i know there are people who are my subscribers who are young moms of course the content that i bring you usually is relatable to you about homemaking and everything motherhood so I have three children, and uh, all these three children, I got them through a cesarean section. So today, my experience, I am sure it's going to open eyes. For those of you who have not gone through the experience, if you're planning to do an elective CS or anything to do with CS, <laughs> you can be sure I have enough experience. So. Well, for me, I did not choose. By the way, my first cesarean was not out of choice. Sometimes people think uh, people are afraid of going into labor. But for me, it was my first time. I was pregnant and I really did not know much. I was at home and uh, I had gotten to 38 weeks. Then uh, suddenly I fell ill. Okay. So I fell ill suddenly and you know this is my first time I'm pregnant, I did not, I had done a bit of research about the symptoms that I should look out for when I am expecting, when I am nearing labor. I was well informed, by the way in Napenda Knowledge Sana, so I had done enough research. Up to now I think I'm one of those people who does a lot of research. When my baby is sick I have to go research and know what this thing is about even before I get to the doctor. So that when I go to the doctor, I explain to the doctor what I am, what I am seeing. And I love to seek knowledge. So I had done enough research, my friend. But I was unprepared psychologically that uh, I will go into cesarean. So I went to the hospital in the morning. And when they were checking the baby's heartbeat, the baby's heartbeat was, uh, it was in a fear. It was fading. So I was in the morning at the hospital at around 10. 11 they were trying to monitor the heartbeat it was faint 12 1 2 3 4 5 so my sister my elder sister was at work and at 5 she passed by the hospital for, for me because i was not ready for cesarean i had already set my mind that uh, i have not gone into labor but for them the doctors as they were monitoring me the nurses they were telling me that the heartbeat was not really perfect. What they were calling baby was in distress. So for me, I thought, how can the baby be in distress? And I have not gone into labor. So me, I was prepared for this, for the, for the labor to come in, to kick in. But apparently, I had maybe experienced some forced labor before, but I had not really given attention to it. On this very day when I am getting really uh, feeling bad and I went to the hospital, is when I was told the baby was in distress. So at around 5 p.m., my sister came in to check with me. I had told her that I was not ready for a cesarean. At 7 p.m., they convinced uh, her that I needed to decide very fast because the baby's heartbeat was fading away. So to cut the long story short it was my sister with the advice she gave me and you her being that she had already three children she had delivered normally and she felt that this is my first baby and i don't need to lose the baby in fact in the hands of the hospital or the nurses while they were watching so i was convinced and i went into cesarean 
So that is how it happened, guys. I do not know what circumstances led to that, but what I can say is I tried my best to have a sober mind. But at that point, I think even that kind of situation made even even worse for the baby. Fast forward two and a half years later i was pregnant with my second baby so my doctor and i we had decided that i am going to try labor and the doctor was very supportive by the way i was well up to the last minute 38 weeks i was fine and labor had not kicked in and then the doctor added me two weeks so at 40 weeks and i was carrying a baby boy the baby was not coming yet and the doctor, because we had agreed with him that I did not want to do a cesarean again, because I knew I had a previous scar. So I try, I wanted to try labor. He added me another week. He added me another week that made it 41 weeks. So he told me after the 41 week, it's over. I just come to the hospital to be admitted. And I obliged. So at 41 weeks, when the labor didn't kick in, I went to the hospital. I remember I went in at around 10 a.m. and then I told the nurses, let me do the walking around town instead of just sitting here so that I can see if the labor will kick in. So that day I left the hospital, I walked around, around the neighboring town, and then uh, I went back to the hospital at around 5 p.m. I had gone with my bag, of course. My friends, huh? then the labor kicked in. So at the hospital, I could see people laboring, but for me, it was not that painful. Apparently, that is how it was starting. So I started to have contractions while at the hospital. They were becoming more intense. So that is day one, I'm, I'm admitted. Then, that whole night, I was in labor. Then the next morning, I was still in labor. So at around 10 a.m. the next day, they were becoming so intense and I was determined. I wanted to give birth normally and the doctor was already supportive of me. So I was with the right hands anyway. The next day, the whole day up to around 5 p.m., I, I felt I was losing it. The dilation was progressing very slowly and I was feeling that I'm very tired. Remember, this is 41 weeks of carrying a baby. So... Because the nurses also were supportive of me, they gave me time. They could see me trying my best to hold on, but I was becoming wary. In fact, I felt that I cannot even be able to push the baby when I had fully dilated. So when it got to around midnight, I said, no, I think I can't manage it anymore. So I called the nurses and told them, please call the doctor. I think I am. So I've labored for 24 hours. And now the dilation is at 5 centimeters. So I told them, I think I'm, I'm not able to continue with this labor. Just take me to cesarean. So I called the anesthetist because that, I didn't even want the next contraction to find me on that bed. And they took me in at 2 a.m. Then I went to deliver my second born baby. So guys, up to this point, you can imagine, we all want to have that normal labor, but... These circumstances of mine made me to choose between life. Either I lose my baby or I lose my life. But wise decisions are required at that point because you don't want to carry a baby full term, then you lose the baby. So after those uh, two experiences, I waited for about uh, six years. This seventh year, I got pregnant again. And this time, guys, I have never gone to more than five doctors looking for someone to approve of me to have a vaginal birth after cesarean. All of you who know that there is something like that. In the US, they allow for those things. Somebody even can have a vaginal birth after three cesareans. But now in Kenya, everybody was telling me this is not possible. It is risky. We don't want cases in court and all that. So in fact, this pregnancy, I went to several doctors trying to seek the opinion, can this one allow me to have a vaginal bath? Can this one allow me to have a... Because in my mind, I felt I can have a vaginal bath anyway, like any other person. Although it's not like any other person, there are people who have had four cesareans and they are healthy. So apparently no one approved of it. So I was in my mind psychologically said that this is going to be a third cesarean. And uh, because I had a very difficult pregnancy, I did not want to risk 
Anytime I felt really bad, I popped into the hospital to get checked because the pregnancy was very difficult. This time, I was carrying a girl and it was the most difficult pregnancy. I will tell you for sure it was a bit difficult. Although I was determined, like previously in my previous pregnancies, I knew this one was not going to work. So I gave it, I just told God, thank you for the baby first of all, because I was asked God for a baby. And therefore, uh, I went into the cesarean at, 30, at uh, 39 weeks and I had the baby removed because of the experience that I had had. So I'm here to tell you that sometimes it is not someone who decides that I want to do a cesarean. It is out of circumstance. Circumstances make you to go for it. Yes, if it's a normal delivery you want, try your best. You can have it. But if it's not possible, please save yourself and the baby go for that cesarean it is a bit hard especially when you're doing a subsequent cs because the pain is twi twice as much so but you can come out healthy and your baby healthy it is better for you my encouragement to you mothers is if you're a first time mother please try your best walk around do those things that can bring in labor if you think i'm sure if you can't manage please go in for that cesarean it's okay save yourself some uh, stress of having people even have i don't know fistula afterwards people have their complications that also come when you're forcing the labor or the baby sometimes i mean finger the cord on the neck try your best but if it's not possible please give in and thank god for that pregnancy that has come to full term because personally there's a time i lost a, a pregnancy and this time when I was pregnant and I take I took it to full term, I did not want to risk. I said if I've come this far, then it's better to save this baby. So I don't know about your experience, but for me, I have had three cesareans. Yes, I have issues with my back, by the way, because I do the epidural, the back one, the one on the spine. So I don't know if it is related, but sometimes I have back ache. I'm not able to bend for too long. But I'm grateful for good health and good and healthy babies. I hope this encourages any young mom who has had one cesarean. Try. If you cannot try labor and it's difficult, please go for that elective cesarean. Save the baby and yourself. That is what I wanted to share with you all. And I hope you have learned something. Just what I wanted to tell you is that if it is not possible, please don't force it. Cesarean is a birth as well, like any other birth. As long as you have given birth to a healthy baby, you're still a human being and you're considered a woman. Okay, good people. Thank you for clicking on this video and I hope to see you in the next story time. Hopefully I'll be sharing something maybe about my journey in motherhood. You know, I have two boys and a one girl and now I'm seeing the parenting is very different. So I'll be sharing, I'll be sharing soon maybe how it is to bring up a baby girl versus baby boys. Okay, so look out for that video and until next time, goodbye everybody and I love you all.